All right, welcome to the Metal Voice. Thank Re you, Jimmy. Re returning guest from a while back, Brad Gillis, Night Ranger. How are you, man? Guitarist extraordinaire. Oh, cut it out. <laughs> what does M? You're here at M3 yes. Rockfest, right? Yeah. You guys have been here before, but what does it mean to you to be at this at this festival? Well, we seem to do it every few years, which is awesome. But for me, it's old home week with all these bands that we grew up with, you know. Yeah. yeah. And you know, I came I came in early uh, and hung out last night with all the other bands and just pretty much said hi to everybody. And I was you know able to watch everybody without being in gig mode like today. And it's just a lot of fun. Um, when you bring all these bands together from the 80s, all of a sudden you've got 15,000 people in the audience, and that's what we got today, so I love it. You know, uh, big hits over the years, especially in the 80s with Night Ranger, and when you look back at Dawn Patrol, what does it mean to you? What is the legacy of Dawn Patrol today? Well, that's pretty much... That's a long know, story? It, no, it was... It just, we, got, it, we got tape. It got us out of the <laughs> gate, you know what I mean? Uh, we were lucky enough to get a record deal back then, but because we were kind of a hard, more of a hard rock band. And, you know, we released Don't Tell Me Love Me, which was a hard rocking song, and radio picked up on it. And with the double guitar solos and the big long outro, we were lucky to be right in that gap where hard rock uh, with melody uh, was viable for radio. So uh, Dawn Patrol was huge for us. Um, we came out right when MTV came out, so they didn't have enough content, tw the 24 7 format, so they played the video from Don't Tell Me Levy 20 times a day. <laughs> I you remember know? the radio, I remember on radio. Yeah. And, and it was great, it put a face to the, to the music, and we, who'd we, go? we went out with Kiss, you know, for our first tour, you know, it was awesome. Um, but, you know, uh, to be able to still be doing it 42 years later is freaking awesome. I remember, and correct me if I'm wrong, the video was a student, it was the video that you did for Don't Tell Me You Love Me. Was it a student film? Like you got some guys from university to put, it that, get, put that together? Yeah, we actually we had a, we did it for cheap. Uh, and we had uh, a guy who was just kind of starting it out, but we believed in him. And we went to these, uh, where they had a bunch of train tracks and an old train sitting there and filmed it in there. Uh, it was, we did it in a day. And the next thing you know, we're watching it all over on TV. But it, it, was, it was just, you know, it was right when the video started kicking ass. Uh, and then we, we d ended up doing about a dozen of them, and they were all pretty big on MTV, you know? Did, did Ozzy sing any back vocals on the first album? No, but... Because uh, there was a rumor that he did back then. No, you know, we had a bunch of people like Vince Neil and a bunch of other people come out and sing on the, uh, one of our tunes. Uh, that's when everybody was hanging out in L.A. We all partied together with the <laughs> rainbow. Yeah. And, you know, we'd get drunk, come down to the studio, we sing backgrounds and, and, and people's records. But uh, that scene back there on, on, you know, Hollywood Boulevard and Sunset, you know, going to the rainbow and the whiskey and Roxy it was so much fun, dude. Uh, I could tell stories all day, but I won't. Uh, but that, you know, that was the energy was heavy back then, and uh, you know, everybody kind of worked with everybody else and records. And you go in there, hang out in the studio, and they, you're playing guitar on somebody's record, or they're singing on yours. And but it was a fun time, and and it was the decade of decadence, Jimmy. <laughs> Speak of the devil released the exact same time. As, as your first album, your debut album. Same week. And I believe, is this the guitar you're using back then? Yes. This is the Speak of the Devil. You're my second favorite Ozzy guitarist. Of course, Randy Rose being the first. Oh, well, thank you, man. Oh, Randy was my favorite. Yeah, he was, that was awesome. Speak of the, I was just, I, I did a post on Speak of the Devil and it just thousands of people reacted to it. Wow. Why do you think it stood the test of time, that album? I think it was a little different for Ozzy to, you know, have different members in the band. Uh, we kind of took it to the next level and oh, maybe overplayed. Uh, the timing was right. Uh, the sound was good. I ended up uh, having this stereo set up with a slight delay on my, on my guitars. I cranked my amp up to freaking 10, man. I think it was that the speakers were singing. Uh, it was just the timing was right, I guess, you know. Um, I'm glad I, get, I still sign these records all the time and, and love that people still enjoy that record. It was a time in my life that I'll never forget. I just talked to Rudy Sarzo yesterday about yeah, this man. very thing. And, he, you know, he goes, you, Tommy, and, of course, uh, Rudy, Tommy, and yourself, 
even though the album might have not necessarily been completely live, it was done so quickly it could have been live. Yeah. Because I know that Max Norman took rehearsal, uh, the rehearsal uh, and the sound, two shows. and the two shows, yeah. and he sort of just took the best of everything. Yeah. And uh, they probably redid all the vocals for Ozzy. Yeah. But it was done in seven days. Yeah, well, we actually, yeah, we went and recorded at SIR Studios uh, for about five or six days, getting it together. Because, you know, we had to get our in together. It was live. You know, you realize when you do a live show with a band, you're playing concerts, you're rehearsing live before you record that live show for release or whatever. So this was all new. A lot of these songs were new for us to play live. And we got it together. Ozzy <laughs> never even showed up. He wasn't even never even there. So, you know, we got it together. We just kind of all overplayed it or because... There was no rules back then, you know. Uh, did did you map up your solos prior? No. No time. No, I never. I'm off the cuff with that stuff. And but I would stick to, you know, Tony Iommi was a great player, oh, sure, and, yeah. and you know the stuff he came out with was so, so innovative back then. For it started heavy metal pretty much, but. Uh, I, I would definitely stick to some of the classic things he did, but like I said, then I'd go nuts and Rudy go nuts and bass, and and we it would kind of turn into a kind of a live jam band at a few points on the Speak of the Double record. But you know, I got done. I was like, you know, I hope this is okay. And uh, but like I said, Max Norman did pick the best out of the uh, the, uh, the sound check. I think it was, and the two live shows for the record. But it was mixed huge, and my guitar tone was huge, and and uh, same freaking. That's guitar. what it is, right? And I pulled out my, my Black Seventy One Les Paul and played it, you know, some of the heavier tunes, um, but that had its own sound too. Um, but it was the time in our life that everything was, you know, it was like you just do what you want, just do it well. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and, um, uh, you know, the legacy of Sister Christian. Everybody's driving on in their car. The song comes on the radio and everything, everybody quiets down and everybody sings the chorus. What is the legacy of Sister Christian today? Wow, you know, I, I got to tell you, man, there's been, it's been in so many movies. It's been, you know, uh, uh, you know. I, I thought they were singing Motorhead at first time. Uh, well, you know, that, that, uh, <laughs> Motorboat, no. Um, you know, it's motor and driving around in your car. So, I, you know, know, I know, I know. And there's been so many, uh, it's been on so many, like, cartoons, uh, American Dad and, and uh, you know, all kinds of, uh, uh, definitely movies uh, and, and stuff. So that's been quite a legacy for that song. Uh, we play it live, everybody sings along. We played shows with big, like, country bands and, and uh, you know, Kid Rock and everything. And, and there's these kids that are 18 years old or younger, and they're all singing the motor. And it's like, wow. Because every, you know, they hear it on the radio or their parents played it at home or, or whatever it may be. But uh, it's it's definitely a timeless classic song for us. So Night Ranger, the future, new album, new music? Uh, we just released a uh, record from Cleveland with a 80-piece uh, high school orchestra. Yeah, yeah. And we did our show and they did a great, the orchestra was awesome. That just came out a while back. And, uh, you know, there's a trade-off between drum solos and the... T Symphonies and stuff from the orchestra, yeah. and, and and they're enhancing our, you and, know, and, and they're youngins. They're, and, they're, and they're, they're, they're young, young. between fourteen and seventeen. What are the yeah, best yeah. of the uh, uh, Ohio area? Uh, but uh, that's the latest thing we've done. But we're touring right now. We we and and everybody, you know, we want to take little breaks here and there. Everybody's got other things going on, and but we're touring this summer with Ario, and we're doing our own big festivals, uh, shows, and, and theaters and stuff here and there, so it's uh, probably do another 80 shows this year. But, it, but, but is it off the table, new music in the future? Uh, we're talking about next year. Okay. But right now, we just, we're booking all these shows. We're doing what we're doing. You got work. You but got we can work. do another record. You know, sure. We'll see what happens. All right. Thanks On that note, uh, Brad Gillis, it's Thank been you, a Jimmy. pleasure. Thank you so much for everything. My pleasure. Yeah. Catch Night Ranger on tour. Uh, pick up the latest orchestration it's hits. 40 years of the night. That's right. Now we got it right. All right, thanks, Brad. All right, my pleasure.